I've asked you to open up your spreadsheet because we've got to talk about how to actually understand correlation ourselves and calculate it. But I need you to have some data, okay? So this is just an example. I'll tell you where I got this example in a minute. But the first thing I'd like you to do is just get the data down, okay? So it's bivariate data because... Why is it bivariate data? There are two variables, right? One of them is some physics, one of them is chemistry. Uh, I have to remember that this is responding to me. Two variables, so each column here, what does each column represent? What would you guess? Probably each one represents a single person and they got each of their marks, right? It might not be. It could be someone's marks over time, which would be somewhat disturbing, but anyhow, okay? We don't know at the moment, but it's reasonable to assume these data points are each individual people, okay? So get the data down. That's the first thing I want you to do. Once you've done that, we want to get a visualization for this, just like we had before with our, um, the graphs that we were looking at. We didn't know what those data points were. So I'm going to show you how to graph this because this is pretty important. You're going to need to take the actual numbers. Let's see how good my precision is. No, it's bad. <laughs> I'm going to highlight across. Why do you need the internet for? Because this is bivariate data, you need both variables. You need both variables. Okay? We're going to graph this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head up to the top. You can see under insert. There we go. Now, depending on your version of Excel, this might look slightly different. But what I want you to look for is sort of somewhere in the middle. Um, you might even see something that says or has an icon that looks like this. Uh, that's really badly calibrated. There we go. Scatter, right? This is a scatter plot. Okay. I've got a whole bunch of different options for my scatter plot. I'm just going to pick the, um, the main one, the first one. There we go. So this is what mine looks like at the moment. I'm going to make it bigger and I'm going to fiddle around with it. Can you raise your hand for me if you get if you got that? Are we there? Yes? Excellent. Thank you. So you're with me now. So here's what we're going to do. I'm first going to make that a bit bigger just so you can see it better. Okay, you two all stay with me. Okay, I'm just going to make this a bit darker. So, okay. Now, you can see... I've got my set of data here. It's skewed very highly toward the top right. Why is that? Why do I have no data towards the left or the bottom? Because their scores, the lowest score I see there is 48, right? So just below 50%. So that's why everything's skewed towards the right-hand side. Let's change that so this is a little easier to read. I want you to follow with me. If you click on these numbers over here, this axis, okay? Make sure the axis itself, the numbers are selected. Mine go from 0 to 90. If you right click on that, man that's small, I guess the resolution is quite high. Right down the bottom you should see something that says format axis. Okay? So we're going to change what's happening on those vertical numbers. Once you click on that, I've got a menu over here on the right hand side. Maybe you've got a whole new dialog box that's come up. That's what my laptop is like, so it's, it's older. The number we're looking for over here is under axis options. Can you see that? There are bounds, as in boundaries, top and bottom. They're currently 0 and 90. Do you see that? Can you give me a suggestion for what we should change that minimum to? This is the vertical axis. If I went 0 to 100, I get this as a percentage. That's kind of nice. But what I really like is to make this vis visualization show my data more clearly. Now, because there are whole parts of the data that I can't see, uh, or rather that aren't included on my set, I'm actually going to remove them. I'm going to change the minimum to 40. Yeah. I don't have any scores below 40. Okay, So if I make my minimum 40, I'll leave my maximum what it is. If I hit enter, do you see what's happened? So I don't, I've just chopped off the bottom. Okay, I don't have the bottom of the graph anymore. Or rather, the bottom starts much higher up. I want to point out, if we were drawing this by hand, we would do something to indicate that we no longer start at zero. Right? So you'd have your zero there, but then what do I have down the bottom here? Yeah, it's like a little jagged line. Because otherwise, that's a misleading graph. It sort of betrays a much bigger difference than is actually there. Do the same thing for the horizontal axis. What value should I choose? Do what he did. 40. I'm going to click on the bottom. Right click to format axis. What was the suggestion? 40. 40? I reckon you can go 50. Damn. However, if I do do 40, I notice that it makes it a, um, it's supposed to be a square grid. So I'm actually going to drag it Oh. 
that's reasonably close. I'm happy with that. Okay. So this is enough for us to uh, start to actually get to the next part. I just want you to look at this. And I want you to think about what you would guess the correlation coefficient might be. Okay? Can you imagine that line of best fit going through? Firstly, is it positive correlation or negative correlation? Positive. It's positive. Actually, that shouldn't have been my first question. That should have been my second question. My first question is, is it correlated at all? But I think most people can see it is. It's positive. Do, would you call that a high number or a low number? Do you think it's close to 1 or close to 0? Out of the two, somewhere, if I only gave you 0 and 1, well, you know it's somewhere in one. the middle. Is it closer to 0 or 1? 1. I think it's closer to 1 than 0. 0 would be like zero all over the place. Okay. I think we can all see it's going to be pretty high. So now we're actually going to work out what the actual value is. Okay. So at this point, I need you to get your calculator out. And again, just like when we did standard deviation and quartiles and all that kind of thing, I'm doing this on a plus 2 up the top here. I'm going to give you the heads up now. I have not tested this on a plus one. Um, so if you don't have the same calculator as me, just be prepared. There might be some slight differences. Okay. It's been a while since we looked at stats. So let's have a think. The very, very first thing you should do, if you haven't used your calculator for a while, is I would advise you actually reset everything. That's what I would advise. Because you never know when like there's some extra data that's sort of tucked in there and it's been saved from a previous time and you don't want it to muck up the calculations. So if you can't quite recall, Shift 9 will get you to the clear menu. Uh, we want to clear everything. Yes. Okay, we're good to go. So now that we've wiped it clean, now we're going to change it into stat mode. So I'm going to go mode and 2 for stat. Okay, now pause. Every other time we've done this before, we've always just said one, because we've only ever been dealing with a single variable. But we are not dealing with a single variable anymore. We are using bivariate data. Now, it, unfortunately, it's not super obvious. <laughs> you look at that, you think, hmm. Bivariate data is option two. Okay. Now, I actually wonder if you remember, when we talk about straight lines, like coordinate geometry and that kind of thing, okay? We say straight lines are in lots of different forms. One of the forms looks a heck of a lot like option two, right? You'd probably say y equals mx plus b. It's the same idea. The a and the b are just our variables. They just got different labels. So go ahead and hit two, and magically, you've got bivariate data. Not to be confused with when you've got the single variable and frequency, okay? So we saw two columns with that before. This is still two columns. How can I tell this is bivariate data though? It says x and y at the top. It says y, not frequency. Okay. Okay. We have some data to put in here. Okay. Now I've actually just gotten rid of my data, so I'm going to grab my. If you've got your computer there, then you can take that same set of values. I think there's five for physics and five for chemistry. Go ahead and input them. Let's make physics the x's and chemistry the y's. So if you go 75 for the first one and then you hit equals, it'll take you down the column. So you're putting in all the x values. Once you put in the last x value and hit equals, you're going to need to use your arrows to come all the way back up, go to the right column, and then select your, um, or input rather, your y values. Have you got your 10 data points in there? Or five data points with 10 values. Okay. So now if you recall, I'm going to get out of that, take the data away. Now to get to the actual uh, variables and what have you, okay, you may recall, we were going to go shift and then which button are we looking for? One. One, very good. The one that says stat mode. Stat menu. You want five? Okay. I was going to go through every single one, wasn't I? Okay. Uh, and remember what letter I told you the correlation coefficient was? R. It's R. So go ahead and hit three and then press equals. equals. Well, I guess zero now remember, you close. suggested to me it was going to be a correlation coefficient closer to 1 than 0, obviously, and it was pretty tight. Well, this is a numerical measure for how tight it was. 